John and Kylie here with Fly Skins. All right, so today I'm going to show you how to make this really cool minnow. I call it the micro minnow. Um, I get it, minnows are kind of micro, but uh, that's what came to my head when I first thought of it. So here it is, the micro minnow. For the platform of this fly, I'm going to start with a Gamera style hook uh, made by A-Rex Hooks. Awesome company. They make a really cool wide gape hook. Uh, its intent obviously is for something different than what we're going to do here but I really like the, uh, the design of the hook and it really plays well with this type of minnow especially for warm water style fishing it's got a wide gape allows you some more flexibility if you want to make a fatter body uh, make the little uh, belly kind of like a fry if you wanted to for this particular pattern and um, it's a great thing so let's talk a little bit more about the thin fins. The fly skins thin fins is a new tail uh, that I developed for fly skins and um, it's a thin nylon material. Uh, the, the one that I'm going to use in this video is a size small. Uh, it comes 12 per pack. It's a good value. Um, the, the intent is to make a material that does not absorb a lot of water, has a lot of action, and um, what you get is a more realistic small fly with, uh, without a stiff movement. So um, what we're looking to do here is make a smaller version of the um, shad bait that I made in a previous video. This one is slightly different, uh, not by much. I left out a few materials and added a few more. Okay, so I've got a Vivas thread here. It's a 140 denier and it is gray. So I'm going to use that thread. It's pretty simple. I'm going to go back and forth here a couple times and put down a good thread base. And as you're doing this, I don't ever go past the bend of the hook here. And then what I'm going to do is come back one more time, and I've got a pretty good base there. You're going to grab your tail, and the length, you can basically adjust the length if you'd like, cut it, uh, depending on what, you're, what hook you're using, what you're trying to replicate. It's got a little tie-in tab. Capture that tab. And I'm going to hold it in the position that I want it to be, roughly, as I go back and put my thread wraps in. All right. So here's another thing. Um, I make a lot of my own dubbing, bait fish dubbing. Uh, there's not a lot of bait fish dubbing out there that does what I want it to do. I do know there's some guys coming up making their own. And that's great. I love it. Um, but this, this is uh, pretty simple to do. You can get a lot of um, bait fish flies out of just two, two simple packs, okay? And that's the pseudo marabou, and then also the ice wing fiber, the UV stuff here. And what I do is I cut it to roughly two inches in length, especially for this bait fish, and then I mix it with my dubbing mixer, made by Airline as well. And I do a 50-50 blend, so 50% of Pseudo marabou, 50% ice wing fiber, and then I just go to town, mix it, and then I end up with something that looks like this. Okay, so it looks great, adds a little flash, and it gets you exactly what you need. All right, so I'm going to take a clump of it, and I'm just going to elongate the fibers and basically straighten them out and stack it on itself. What that's going to do is just going to keep it from being all watered up and messy. And then you want a decent pinch of it, not too much, just a little bit. I'm going to stack this in. I'm going to go right where the 50% point here is, or the halfway point on my shank, what's left here. And as you can see, that length of the fibers pretty much lines up with the tip of the tail. So I'm going to tie that in right in the middle on my side, a couple wraps. I'm going to take it and I'm going to fold it directly over the eye to the other side. 
and I'm going to capture that back. Okay, and then I can work right behind the eye. And if you pull it all back, you can kind of see what we're doing here. Uh, I've got a pretty decent body. So, depending on your first cluster, if you think you've got too much, or maybe, you know, if I put the same stack on there, it's going to be too bulky, then you just go thinner on your next one. Okay, so I'm going to grab another cluster of my dubbing here. And this one, it, it looks pretty good. This is about what I'm looking for. Less is more sometimes. But it, you want to about the same amount that I'm doing here. Can't really tell you except show you about what the cluster size looks like. Only because what's going to happen is when I put this flexible glue on next, it's going to kind of shrink it down a little bit. Okay. So same thing, 50% mark on the dubbing. Lay it here on, on your side. Capture it. Fold it over. Capture it again. Now I don't want to get crazy with thread here because I want to leave just a little spot for me to add my eyes next. Okay, So you don't have to be overly crazy with your knots either on this one. Just get a good couple half hitches in there because you're going to put glue on it. So you don't have to go nuts. Not only are you going to have glue holding the eyes in on the same exact spot, but you're also going to have your epoxy over that. So it'll do just fine. Plus it'll speed up your tying process. All right, so now I've got this cool little body shape and I'm gonna rotate the vise here. So I've got kind of a good profile here going uh, and I don't wanna ruin the, the body, how it's tapered. So what I'm gonna do when I put my glue on here and I'm gonna use this BSI, Bob Smith Industries. It's a foam cure flexible glue uh, I love this stuff. It's kind of stringy. It's kind of like, reminds me of rubber cement, but it does a great job for this kind of stuff. And um, I'm going to use one little dot right behind the hook on both sides. So that way I don't ruin the profile of the dubbing that I've got in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the fibers back. I'm going to tilt this to the side. And when I come in, I'm going to put one little dot. Break the strings away from the glue. Flip it around. And then the same thing on this side. Okay? And then what you're going to do real nice and easy is you're going to take your fingers and kind of barely touch the fibers there. And you're going to work your way back. And what that's going to do is kind of bond those fibers with the tail. Okay? And if you don't think you've added enough, easy. All you gotta do, add a little bit more. And I just want enough to um, keep it bonded together so that um, I've got a good profile here. Now if your tail does some funky stuff, decides to go to one side. This stuff dries pretty, I don't know, decently fast, but um, you just keep shaping it with your fingers in the way that you want. It'll go right where you want. Okay, so I can come in and I can trim some of these fibers. What you're going to get still is a flexible fly. When this thing gets wet, it's going to move. The tail's still going to have movement. It's not like uh, one of those stiff patterns. Um, and if you want, you can just put some glue right here in the back if you want more movement in the tail. It's that simple. So what I have here is I have some fibers um, that went beyond the actual uh, tail here. So I'm just going to come in and I'm going to clip those down. Just to make it nice and clean. Alright, so the next step, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my eyes. And my favorite eyes out there on the market, you guys probably already know, um, are made by Deer Creek. Deer Creek eyes, they got the zombie eyes, they've got the Jurassic eyes, they've got all kinds of cool stuff. They've got these small uh, bait fish eyes as well. And I'm going to use the, let's see here, it's like a golden color. I'm going to come in with some super glue right on those threads behind the eye now. Just a little bit.
and just stick your eyes on there. Typically what I like to do too, um, I'll make a bunch of these and I will let them sit uh, because the super glue as it cures, you know, it can fog up a particular area because it's, as it's evaporating, it's um, kind of like oxidizing whatever area. Sometimes it can kind of look like it's messing up the eyes, but it's not. And it does it with any particular, any eye. Uh, but it, as soon as you put another clear coat over it, it, it comes back to normal. So. I've got some stray fibers in here. Uh, one way to clear those up real quick, I just take a lighter and I kind of tap those areas. And then it'll clean it up real good. All those loose fibers, um, if you're meticulous, if you don't care, it doesn't matter. But the reason why I do that prior to the next step is because as you're applying your UV epoxy or your regular epoxy, whatever it is, uh, it'll get all kind of funky looking and uh, it won't look right. So I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to rotate this so you guys can see a little bit better what I'm doing. Hopefully I was descriptive enough as we went through the video so you guys can see. Okay, so I have the fly here and my next step is going to be to color it. So when I color this, I'm going to use my Copic markers. You can use any type of permanent marker, but I really like Copics mostly because... Uh, they adhere really well to um, to the materials here. Uh, synthetic materials, they seem to hold color extremely well, and they've got natural colors. Natural colors in permanent markers or uh, fabric markers, sometimes it's difficult to find, and they, they do the job. Plus, they have a cool uh, design where you can airbrush with them. You can um, use the paintbrush, chisel tip, or, um, I'm sorry, the, the paint the brush tip or the chisel tip. I'm going to come in with an olive here. I'm going to hit the back. I'm going to add my horizontal line here. Just done. I'm going to add a little red throat to it. Um, what that emulates is uh, sometimes it's stress in a fish, sometimes it's uh, they're just transparent, and uh, that's where their organs are. Okay. All right. So there is that. And then one cool thing I always keep on my desk, a little tip here, is a sticky pad. You can use that to color on, you can use it to mix epoxy, all kinds of cool stuff. So I'm going to take this out, and I'm going to color the tail, and I'm going to take a black marker and just hit the tips uh, and make it look more realistic. We're back now. And there it is, all colored up. My next step is to add some epoxy or uh, UV resin or whatever you whatever your favorite one is. And there you have it. That's the micro minnow. Pretty cool bait fish pattern. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop up here um, on the next screen the list of materials so that you can go out and get them. And 
make sure you're a successful fisherman on any day, okay?